Okay, guys. Uh, today's video is going to be a bit different. We're going to play a story game because, uh, you know, eh, don't, don't like playing this game. But, real quick, you may be asking, where have you been the past week? Uh, school, uh, it's college, so we're going to be probably doing more of a weekly thing after this upload on uh, the 10th. Uh, yeah, dating it, dating when I recorded this. But, um, we're, we're going to start doing just weekly uploads and things. Uh, I've also, for the past 10 days, been commenting on uh, one of PewDiePie's video a day uh, until he decides to collab, collab with me. Uh, PewDiePie, I will specifically link this comment, or this uh, video from now on. Well, no, not this video, but I'm going to do it for one of them. And PewDiePie. Think about it, okay, man? Think about it. Anyways, let's let's get into the game. I have no idea how this is gonna play. Long ago in England in 1592, there begins our tale, and all of it is true. Through the whole of London, new born the great expand. Covering folking, weeping sores, and leaving thousands dead. Okay. From towns and cities, doctors they did flee, leaving their patients to die in misery. But one brave doctor stayed when all the cowards fled. My heart to be because he was too sick to leave his bed. Understand. Alas, tis my final hour. I will surely die. I am too far gone to recover, and for the plague there is no cure. Unless, unless a cure might be found in the stars. Okay, I say that I lost appetite and moderate thirst and pustle swellings behind the ears and the armpits and in the groin. These are symptoms of a fever provoked by excess sanguin sanguinity in the liver. I, I guess I chose Sagittarius. Let me see now. According to the stars, the way to cure the plague is to treat the fever it provokes. Oh, can it be true? Might a disease so monstrous as the plague be cured by treating it as if it were an exceeding bad fever? Then I must use powerful herbs to bring the fever to crisis and break it. Let me see now. Angelica and dandelion for heat, uh, borage to provoke sweating, infuse them in wine, uh, strain and distill the mixture to produce our most powerful strong water. Wait, I don't think that's water. You used wine in there. Oh. Huzzah! I am cured! <laughs> Oh, I thought he died. I shall now go forth with my miraculous strong water to cure all London of the plague. What did this do? Ah. What? Case summary. Okay. Let's be a doctor. Quirin. Querent? I don't, I don't know how to, uh, Curent? Uh, editor, replace that with patient. I don't know why I'm saying editor, I'm the editor. Anyways, uh, Simon Foreman, how might I be cured of the plague? I judged my plague symptoms as being provoked by a fever. I invented a new kind of strong water to clear it. Cure it. Mm 
singing I, I get it's because this is like a Shakespeare play but it's still jarring no, no, jarring's not the right word but still it's still it, it still makes me pause here comes a lady queer and a little wary her name is Lady Scarlet. and what can her trouble be? Okay, so it is pronounced Quirin. God give you a good day, madam. How may I... Are you Mr. Foreman? Um, Mr. Simon Foreman, the, the doctor? Aye, madam, I am indeed Dr. Simon Foreman. I bid you welcome to my consulting chambers. Uh, mistress, uh, mistress... Alan, mistress... Avis Allen of Lambeth. Uh, pray tell me your age, if you please, madam. I am three and thirty years of age. And how might I do you service this day, Mr. Allen? Uh, pray describe your troubles to me. Well, the pain started full late last eve upon retiring to bed. Oh, not that I am in the habit of retiring so late, but my husband did desire a special supper of cold meats to celebrate and give thanks for... for... Uh, well, uh, in any case, it started in the night, and it continued until dawning. That being the pain in my head, and the chundering. A moment whilst I make note of this. A headache and involuntary purging. Is that all? Aye, that is all. And thinking on it, my complaint to seem most trifling. And you, you are doubtless busy with important cases. Oh, like the plague! Yea, verily, mayhap I should not have come after all. Good day, Dr. Foreman. I, I beseech you, pardon me, for I have wasted your time. Prithee, do not go, uh, for I assure you, madam, your case verily is important to me. And tis important to you, is it not, Mistress Allen? Else you would not have come this day. Well, uh, I... Let us consult the stars now, then, shall we? What is the cause of Mistress Allen's suffering? Why does this feel like a children's show? Full night was headache and chundering caused by suffering. It's in case of disturbance of the mind. Saturn and detriment retrograde. This suggests a mild imbalance of black bile in the body. I. Suffering from evil indigestion. I think it's this one. Because I don't think evil digestion is the thing, so. Scorpio. You are with child, Mistress Allen. It was the reason for your celebration last evening, methinks? Aye! But how did you know? I can see it in my chart, madam. There is a planet aligned with Scorpio at present. Scorpio being the constellation that rules over such matters. Uh, pray tell, how long has it been since your monthly courses? It has been 14 weeks since my courses, and yesterday I did feel the child quicken. So, indeed, t'was the cause for our celebration, as you say. <laughs> for I, I have been with child before, you see, but tis never. And Mr. Allen and I do pray this one will be born alive. <laughs> there, there, dear lady. The presence of the planet Mercury in my chart does suggest you suffer from anxious passions on account of your condition, and given your ill-favoured history, I warrant twas the twin burdens of hope and fear that provoked your troubles last evening. Oh, I see. Pray take this flask of wine, madam. 
It has been infused with Wait. cloves, ginger root, and cinnamon. Drink of it each morning, and you should soon feel much improved. Verily, oh, I will do as you advise. I thank ye heartily, sir. Fare you well, Dr. Foreman. Fare you well, Mistress Allen. You shouldn't give alcohol to a pregnant woman. That's not. She shouldn't be drinking alcohol. <laughs> uh, was, I did present with some. I had to remember to get these. Because I don't like that word for some reason. They present with symptoms of headache and involuntary upward purging. I judged the patient as being with child. Methinks the patient is most pleased with me for the reading I gave today. So far, this. So far, I'm more qualified to be a doctor than this guy. Hey, sir. You are Simon Foreman, the physician, are you not? Uh, these are your rooms. Indeed, I am he, and well met, sir. Be it Thomas Blagg I have the honor of welcoming into my humble consulting chambers, the Dean of Rochester Cathedral. Indeed, tis I, Thomas Blagg. Uh, though it is not upon church business that I come to you this day, tis upon a matter of my own that I require counsel. I have lately been offered some very lucrative investment opportunities, and, uh, well, it is said that God speaks to us through the stars, does he not? Indeed he does. Tis well known that astrology is but a conduit for the word of God, as interpreted using scientific means. And now, these investments of which you speak, pray tell of them, if you please. Two merchant ships will shortly set sail on very lucrative trading expeditions. I do not possess the coin to invest in both. Hence, I must choose between them. And I must choose very wisely indeed. Mm, for sea voyages are most perilous. And if my ship were to founder or be captured by pirates, I would lose my entire investment. Aye, forsooth. It would be most lamentable. To say nothing of the poor souls who might lose their lives. Who are, naturally, the uh, greater of my concerns. Aye, naturally. And whither might these ships be bound? The first is bound for the Spice Islands of the East. Tis a voyage to be undertaken by a ship named the Conquering Cherub. The other is the Pride of Yarmouth. She is to bring back sugar from the Americas. Have you now the information you require? Then, perchance, you may divine for me upon which of these two ships our Lord God has bestowed his divine blessing. Aye, Dean Blagg, we may now consult the stars. Should Thomas Blagg invest in the voyage of the conquering cherub, or that of the pride of Yarmouth? Okay, let's, let's get, uh, Mr. Blagg here some stonks. Let's, let's hope we hit an, another uh, GameStop. Uh, that's a rating. Mid stars are sent to her. There's a change in fortune. She sent femininity. represents victory.
Okay, a change in fortune does not mean a good change in fortune, necessarily. So, this one. The stars advise you to invest in the ship named the Conquering Cherub. I see. And why is that? Well, I have calculated that at this very hour, upon this very day, the planet Mars and the constellation Scorpio do both dwell in that part of the sky we call the House of Children. And, as it happens, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio, hence we may say that Mars is presently exalted. Mars has been exalted by Scorpio, you say? And what might that mean? When exalted, Mars represents victory. And so, with victory in the House of Children, we may read this as a victorious child. Ergo, the conquering cherub. Ah, I see. Uh, for a cherub is a, is a kind of child, is it not? In sooth, I do find the science of astrology verily fascinating. <laughs> I thank you, Dr. Foreman. You have been most helpful. Uh, I think this guy's just talking, and he doesn't even know what he's saying. I have a wish to know which two jobs to make a better investment. I did well in Lord Chair. I made him so was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. I'm high enough for this game. Good morrow, sir. Pray tell, are these the consulting chambers of Simon Foreman, Doctor of Astrology and Physic? Indeed, tis I, Doctor Simon Foreman. And your name, madam? Emma Sharp of Shoreditch, sir. Five and twenty years of age. Welcome, Miss Sharp. And how may I do you service this day? Well, tis a trifle delicate. A man has asked me to be his wife. A dear, kind man. But, but... <gasps> I fear you will think me cold, Dr. Foreman. There, there, madam, whatever is the matter? Well, he is exceeding advanced in years. I do worry he may not be long for the world, and if he were to die, I do not think I could bear it. <laughs> Verily, I would not. Indeed, methinks I would rather not marry him at all. Am I very heartless, Dr. Foreman? Nay, not in the least, madam. Your fears are most reasonable. The man in the winter of his life is indeed more likely to die. I assure you, madam, tis a medical fact. But, methinks you wish to know whether this man be afflicted with a grave health condition, do you not? To wit, any ailment that might soon prove fatal? Forsooth I do. That is my question precisely. Why, Dr. Foreman, tis as if you have a gift for reading minds. <laughs> uh, merely the gift of logical surmise, madam. Let us see whether a judgment of the stars may calm your fears. Uh, does Mr... Uh, what was your gentleman's name? Mr. George Middleton, a wool merchant. <clears throat> does Mr. Middleton have any ailments that might hasten his death? Okay, we're going to end this video here because the video is getting a little long. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Peace.